This video is going to be about the micro trucks. If you have been watching some of the short format videos I've been posting from Phuket, where I am right now, you have seen many of the tiny Daihatsu and Suzuki and some other branded trucks as well that are being used not only in Phuket but all over the place on the Thai coastline especially in tourist areas partly for commercial purposes to haul merchandise but mostly to move the tourists themselves because these trucks are very fuel efficient in fact the fuel economy of a brand new Daihatsu is somewhere around 40 miles to the gallon and if you convert it into a little microvan sort of a thing you can have six fully grown tourists in the back with that kind of fuel economy so that really says something about them uh, before I continue make sure to check out the links give a subscribe like share the video whatever you feel like doing to help the channel and uh, so I'm gonna focus on what you can do to get these trucks into the US in fact these trucks are in the US as you can see some people are driving them already on public roads they can be legalized and in fact some of them have already been legalized and legally registered in America and so you can buy them just to show you these so-called K trucks or key trucks I don't know how to pronounce it this is a Japanese specification these K trucks are supposed to be and cars also no more than a thousand cc so roughly the engine size of a more powerful motorcycle but in a car and this is totally old-fashioned antiquated gasoline technology but using as sparingly using as energy efficiently as possible without going hybrid or introducing some sort of an electric enhancement to it so it's kind of old-fashioned but it is it's just a cute and very compact and still pretty efficient way of doing cars not to mention trucks so you see the prices ten thousand dollars it's not going be below that and this is a pretty old truck for ten thousand dollars although it only has a few miles on it this is in kilometers not in miles so this is something like twenty thousand miles so it, it has hardly ever been used an astonishing 660 cc that's not that big even for a motorcycle ten thousand dollars now the thing that shocked me was to discover how cheap how cheap these cars are if you purchase them from Japan uh, look at this price it's under three thousand dollars and there are many many of these trucks under two thousand dollars as you can see they are getting sold out pretty quickly so I assume it's better to put in a request with one of these import export companies they will do some of the work for you but you also have to hire some sort of an American accounting importing company that knows how to handle the details and the total cost of dragging it over the Pacific Ocean and having it legally entered the US is going to be more than a thousand extra dollars so just be prepared for that the end result is still going to be much much cheaper than buying it in the US so what's the legal background of this how do you legally um, uh, bring these K trucks into the US is there is there a law to prevent you from importing something well the law is totally stupid of course you cannot import anything that's not legally already on American uh, roads unless it's at least 25 years old there is this stupid law according to which if it's an antique then you can bring it in so it has to be more than 25 years old which I guess this one is and many of them are 
because then this would have to we would have to go back to the at least the late 1990s and so a lot of people still bring them in some of them are in remarkably good condition this one just needs a good cleaning really some lubrication and but some of them are also lemons and they are rotting away or falling apart so you would have to deal with a really trustworthy Japanese partner to do this with and you can import it not just from Japan they exist all over um, they exist in in Asia even on the in the Americas there are some places even in the Caribbean obviously in Europe there are Daihatsu dealers there Suzuki dealers as well Suzuki as a car company used to operate in the US in fact Daihatsu used to operate also in the 1980s and I believe in the 70s as well uh, to my knowledge Toyota now owns a controlling stake in Daihatsu and Daihatsu put together some of the early Toyota Scion cars which as you can see did not last long in the US Toyota tried to go down market and it did not work out the American consumer just wants something a bit more luxurious and a bit more powerful and less bare bones but uh, as you can see there are plenty of uh, dealers all over the place that you could work with the problem is most of these cars have their steering wheels on the wrong side in the US you, we drive on the right side of the road so having a car with the steering wheel on the right side is not necessarily the the, the the safest option in my opinion so I'm a little bit nervous about that um, Suzuki also makes the carry this is the new carry the older carry was much, much nicer in my opinion um, this is a Honda I don't know if you, I can show you the carry as it as it looked I thought it was a really cute car back in the 90s but not not really anymore and it was really tiny the new carry is not is not such a cute car do we have a carry here a Suzuki carry 1998 no this is not my favorite one mm, not even this one the ones they made in the early 90s those are really cute but even these the late 90s stuff they will at least good looking I mean small cars definitely small cars this is the late 1990s they changed the headlight it's not as cute as the ones that I really really liked which are even earlier than that so you have to deal with this law but there is the other thing which nobody talks about which is that when you are importing this vehicle with the drivetrain in it the federal government sees you as an importer of a functional vehicle that you want to launch on American roads so that's why anything that's earlier less than 25 years of age they will confiscate and destroy but if you remove the engine and the transmission system from it and you just import it as a body that I don't think that legal you would have to consult obviously with the lawyers but I don't think that would qualify as you importing a car or a truck you are now importing car parts which is not controlled anywhere in the the same way so I think the best way to do this would be to get maybe a damaged or not running uh, truck a mini truck that has a good body from Japan or wherever you want to get it from and I know the Japanese and many of the Asians who are industrious would remove the engine and the transmission if you paid them the extra money for it that would lighten the package a great deal as well so you could just import the, the body of the truck and then you could get a brand new engine and transmission from the company as separate items once again you would not be importing a vehicle you would just be importing vehicle parts which I think would be outside of the controls of, of the federal government 
as far as vehicle control I is concerned. But once the federal government agrees to it and you have everything in the U.S., you still have to register it in your state. So you would have to study the laws in your state as well. In New York, I know that so long that you bought the drivetrain separately and you installed it either by yourself or you hired somebody to do it, that would qualify as a home-built vehicle and you could register it as one. And I think getting a much newer car than something from the 1990s, like a five-year-old car, in this way would make a lot more sense, to me at, at least. Now, Japan, to my knowledge, has some kind of a law to make it very difficult, or very expensive, rather, for people to drive older cars. So once your car or truck is over five years of age, the Japanese government is going to start taxing you hard. And so that's why if you go to Japan, almost all the cars are recent models. The you see a v very few old restored antique cars. They are typically clean and beautiful, but most people drive new. And this is because of the laws. And that's why you can buy cars that are not very old, less than a decade old, for very little money, often just for hundreds of dollars. And that's how these, these cheap skate uh, export-import companies exist because they can source these cars from the Japanese market for much less than even this. So they are making a fortune even charging this little money for, for you. There are some of these trucks being sold in the U.S. for fleets for off-road use. This is also very interesting because some of these trucks is, are really cute. I love this li this little Daihatsu van. I think it's really cute. I don't like the way the rear of it is cut out, but other than that, it's a really cute little van. I would prefer to put some m m a module in the back. I hope they have something because I just don't like the cut out. And they are a bit bare bones and underpowered. The fuel economy stands at 40 miles to the gallon for a brand new truck like this which I think is it's unbelievably efficient. But that's why they are very small. But with a lot of gearing, you, you can still have them pull a bunch of people or a, a heavy load uh, up a steep hill, which I have witnessed because I have rented some of these trucks right here in Phuket, and you really have to downshift. But they can take, uh, they can take you up and even a bunch of people up a steep slope Look at this, very cute. I mean, a lot of people buy a truck or a van to bully or frighten other people on the highway. If that's your goal, this is not the truck to do it with. But if you just want something very efficient and carry your ride to the beach or the greenway, or just to do some local errands and shopping and want something more weather protective than an electric scooter, then this would be a much, much cheaper way to go. Now, once again, I don't know how much these cost because they you have to submit uh, a request, inquire about uh, fleet sales, and then they have a salesperson contact you. But I wonder if these are brand new. I wonder if a deal could be achieved with these people to have the drive tr train removed, purchase just the body and the, the suspension as a, and the interior, as, as car parts and then separately purchase everything else, put it back together and register it in the local state as a home-built vehicle. That to me sounds like the, the most sensible way to go. In any case, once you go through all of this, you're probably not going to come out any cheaper than buying a quality used small van like a Honda or Toyota van in the US, which you can buy for about $10,000. This would be more efficient, but the uh, used Honda van is going to give you more power, more space, a more upscale interior, a larger body, more safety, all of that. So this is really for people who just love the, the cuteness of it, who want to stand out, who want something nobody else has, that sort of thing, or just to have fun building, building stuff. So not necessarily for everybody, but uh, something to consider and something that has been bugging my mind ever since I came down here to Phuket. 
I'm going to be here for another two weeks, then back to Bangkok for October and November, and then turning back westbound, possibly with a long stopover in Europe, I mean long, a month long stopover in Europe in December or January before landing in the U.S., hopefully with a new government. I'll be back.